you're ready, let's go. Welcome everyone. You are now tuned into another amazing edition of Sonia on Air, the quarantine <laughs> edition. I have an amazing guest for you today. This is the first time that I'm actually doing some sort of interview from a remote location in my parents' living room, but I have none other than New York Times best-selling author, Terry Woods. How are you, sweetheart? Hey, how are you, my love? How are you? I'm just trying to deal with this whole, you know, Karanda. She, she's a bitch. <laughs> how are you no. holding up over there in this quarantine? She is not a game. No. She's not, she's not to be played with. No, no. And it's no, not, not at, at all. That, that she's not a game, you know, because you are the author of the <laughs> urban classic, True to the Game. But, you know, I just want to get some quarantine tips. What have you been doing to keep yourself normal in this whole quarantine? Um, at first, I was going out to the park, but then the police threw me out one day, and I realized that they closed all of the parks. Oh, you were one of those? <laughs> park to walk in you know I would see geese I would see um you know ducks I would see you know groundhogs I would see because we have a a, a a a river we have a lake or whatever you know we have water and we have rowboating oh. um park you could rent the you could rent the boats and row and nice. you know so yeah it's, it's, a, it's a great park and I'm uh, you know so you have to get out but you have to be safe yeah and you have to see that things are still moving mm -hmm. um you know so you you just you just can't you just don't stop you just have to you know you have to find a way around everything now you have to find a way around the grocery store you have to find a way you know ab around bringing your stuff in the house you have to find a way about you know going outside with your kids especially your teenagers because you know, mine could kill the whole house. So, you know, I can't let them out right. because they don't follow instructions like I tell them to, you know, ever. And so they're not going to do it now. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not letting them out because it could be disastrous. It's just too it much. Is, it, it is you know, if you want to, those guys want to go for a walk, I will gladly go for a walk with them and we can go for a walk or something, but I'm not letting them ride their bikes. I'm not letting them out of my sight. Um, I'm really trying to put my foot down when it comes to social distancing. Um, even if I have to ask someone to just, you know, please give me a little bit more space. I want my space. And I think that people should respect people's space. Yeah. Um, and that's how I think that we're going to be moving around, moving forward. It's just about discipline, mm -hmm. um, it's about really planning how you're going to move. So that when you go outside, you make sure you do everything you need to do. You do it quickly, um, and you you get yourself you know back in until we really figure out exactly what we're dealing with. I just don't think that there's a level of honesty in what we're actually dealing with right now. Right. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that there's enough uh, information being passed around about how to protect yourself. That's so true. And, and, and that's just. Bad. You know, and then, and the mask, that's it. right, and, then, and this is the thing, it, I mean, I can never talk, <laughs> I always get in trouble, <laughs> people want to shut me down, but this is the thing though, I get the social distancing thing, uh -huh. but how does that work for black people who don't have space in general like a lot of my people have no space like my family like I'm like you guys have to be really vigilant because first of all it's too many of y'all in me <laughs> I don't go over there now I know it's frustrating it is so frustrating I was talking to you on the phone the other day and I told you there was two elevators. It was my daughter and I, and then another gentleman. He got on the same elevator, and I'm just looking at him. And I did say, I said, you know what? I have a problem with you breathing <laughs> right now because I have a problem with people breathing too. Yes, it's crazy. We're at this point where we are we're frustrated because people are breathing. 
It's not even that. It's it's just the un one. It's the uncertainty. You're yeah. playing with uncertainty every day. You have no idea. Yeah, no mask, no mask at all. Not only that, it just doesn't seem like folks really know exactly what this is. There's they're experimenting with 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 finding a cure, which is great. You know, you're you're experimenting, but. <sighs> There's uncertainty in experiments it is as well. Too. I know people have been making their own fashionable face masks. Do they even work? Or do you need one of those like hospital masks? Like, I don't know. This is, this is the thing. This is the thing. Did you see the, um, did you see the guy? He had the mask and he was spraying into them like a cough. Like it was like a bottle spray. You didn't see him. No, no. Yo. He was called spray bottle. Like if you hold up a mask and you spray. Okay. And the spray goes right through the mask. Really? So it doesn't even work. <laughs> we need we need Jesus. No, the only yo, it was like he had like two or three masks and the only ones that really worked were like the I know my the the N ninety five. Yes, I gotta get you that. have to get the N95, but put it like this. If you can hold up the mask and you can take any type of spray bottle and spray through it. And it goes through it. it that's matter. not a good sign. That's true. That's, that's not a good sign that you're. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what we're going to do. I know I've even resorted if I'm driving on the street, you know, just to go run some errands for some, you know, essentials like groceries. If I see a hospital worker, if I see UPS, I'm literally blocking them with my car. And I'm like, hey, yo, you got any face masks and gloves? Like, it's gotten to that street level at this point. I don't know what to do because I'm checking Amazon and all the stores. And everything is sold out. This is, this is the thing. You have to just watch how you move. You yes. want to protect yourself. You want to get a really good mask for yourself that things can't come in on you, okay? Things don't come in on you. You just don't want things coming in on you at this point out there when you've got to go out. Yeah. The other thing is, oh, my God. Like, if anybody like gets a picture of me, like, I wear a, um, I'm waiting for my little cap to come. But, of course, it's coming from friggin' China. I got to wait, like, two weeks. Um, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, okay, so let's say you're wearing a mask, right? Let's say you're wearing a mask right now, right? Mm -hmm. And you got your mask, you got your gloves, you're ready, right? Mm -hmm. And here's somebody six feet away from you in a line, right? And they sneeze. Mm -hmm. And they have corona, or they're coughing, or they walk by you and they cough, or right. whatever. Allegedly, it moves allegedly the six feet distance thing is that what that's supposed to mean because it the mist is in the air but the even though they say that it lasts three hours on you know oh my god it's like three days on plastic i heard three out how long is it in the air wow. like who knows yeah i think it's, the stuff it's, 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 and yeah. so you're there with you got your mask you're doing everything right and here this person goes and coughs and sneezes and you're walking into their mist, right? And it's in your hair. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I know. Well, we're just gonna, you know, continue to listen. It's worse than pollen. No, no, no. But for me, it's worse than pollen. It is. It is a hundred times worse than pollen. Right, because the pollen just gives me hives if it gets right. in my hair. Wanda, she's killing me. She sneezes all day, and and then I gotta go home and wash my hair out and get the and pollen out of my hair. Every time you go outside, your hair and your clothes. They're only telling you about washing your hands, but you have to wash your entire body, including your clothes. This is insanity. It's insanity, you know. But enough about that, because I, I really want yeah. to talk about you. Listen, it gives me anxiety now just to go outside and move around. And then I got to come in with my packages. I got to wipe everything down. God knows what the mailman's bringing me. You know, I got to wipe that down. I got to wipe the doorknobs down. Then I got to go. And so I just don't think that, you know, just, just so we're clear, I don't know if the 
um, you know, if, if everybody really got got that message that these are all these steps that you have to do, and it's so exhausting, yeah. and I don't even want to like, do. so much. I don't even want to go outside. Yeah, everyone went to the, the grocery store. store. I had a, I saw a UPS worker yesterday delivering packages without gloves or wearing a mask. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, just imagine how many lives he's putting in jeopardy because you yeah. have the coronavirus and not even know it. This, this is the thing. This is the deal. He's in and out of his truck and he's dropping packages off at a door, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, unless he's face to face with someone, he is. He's dropping packages to their front door. Yeah, but are they answering the door or is he just leaving the package there? They're probably answering the door because remember, you have to sign for it. So you have I to. Know. I mean, I got a package yesterday and I didn't have to sign for it. It was just at my door. When I opened the door, it was there. Well, honey, they knocking on my door. Like, oh, Lord. make sure we're delivering these packages to the right place. So they're not leaving anything just in front of my door. So I don't know. But, you know, I just I, want to change topics because that's... Okay. I have no idea. Me either. I have no idea about that. But what I do have an idea about, Terry, what, I, what I, I do really want to, you know, shift the conversation towards is you as a New York Times best-selling author, female power, boss babe. You know, I was... Uh, by the way, behind me, right, this is my childhood book right? You and have a little morning, I'm kind of like, let me just see what books are in here because I just have like hundreds of books also in storage, and I came across this. <laughs> when I tell you every book you've written, this girl's read it. Seriously. When I tell you, when I look back, I don't think people realize that I've been doing this for so long. Game changer. You are game they changer. They don't get it. Like they no. don't. They don't, think. But do you even understand? <laughs> but do you even understand that you got an entire culture, an entire people to read it? To read, Terry. That's something amazing. People started reading as soon as you dropped True to the Game, Part One. People started reading. But you know what? This this is the thing. And 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 when I look when I look back on it. And I hear that, and I hear that message so often from especially inmate mm -hmm. prisoners, a lot of men who had never read a book before right. and said that it was the first book that they ever read, you know. Um, I had targeted a lot of prisons with my book when I first started. I started with prison mail. Oh. See, I couldn't get published. Right. Nobody would publish me. People don't realize um, Truth to the Game is 27 years old. Wow. Wow. An adult. Truth to the Game is now an adult. Truth let's, to the Game is getting ready to be over the hill. So let's talk about that. So you penned Truth to the Game, and then when it came time to publish, did you speak a traditional publishing house? Well, back then, <laughs> back then <laughs> back in the day a long <laughs> long time ago like almost 30 years ago uh -huh. uh, we didn't have computers right there were no computers and oh. so I was just in West Philly uh. like I was a secretary in West Philly wow they this lady said that I needed to get the Writer's Digest. Mm -hmm. I remember that. I remember, remember that? Digest. Yeah, yeah. It used to be um, in the grocery store right next to the checkout. No, maybe it's not that one then. No? Reader's no. Digest? Or you said Writer's Digest. Yeah, you, you see, they y'all be tricking me. Now, hold on. The Writer's Digest. Uh-huh. Re you're thinking Reader's Digest. Yeah. Yeah. Next to the National Enquirer. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. This, book, this book had to be about this thick. It was insanity. Oh. Mm -hmm. But it told you every major publisher in the universe. Oh. 
and it told you how to submit. It told you if you were allowed to submit or if you needed an agent, solicited or unsolicited. Freaking big word means agent or no agent. Right. Um, and it, it gave you everybody's address. Nice. And it gave you step-by-step -step instructions on how to submit to all the publishing companies that would accept a manuscript without an agent. I didn't know how to get an agent. Right. Yeah, because you couldn't get your foot in the door if you didn't have an agent. You can't get no agent. I don't know how these people be getting them. You so can't get question, no agent. Quick question. Yeah, that's difficult. Um, you got to go to the You got to go to the, the, like, the, the, you gotta go to the, the Jacob stuff. Davis book conventions and stuff. Like, you got to stumble across meeting them. Yeah. Um, you 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 stumble across people who are in that field that make an introduction. Um, it's 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 not. It's, I don't know. It, it was always hard for me. Yeah. It'd be hard for me. Just just quick question before you know we move on. Does that book still exist to this day in two thousand and twenty? Writers Digest. I know there are so many people who are hoping to get their books in front of traditional publishing houses. Does that book still exist? Um, I don't know. I've never seen it. So I don't know. But so then let's talk about, so then you try to get in front of the traditional publishing houses and um, that didn't work out. So then it's true that you decided to self-publish your first book, True to the Game. Is that accurate? I decided to self-publish the book. I, well, It wasn't like you felt like that, like how you're saying it, as much as it was um, figuring things out as I went along. Mm. I guess that's the better way to put it. And I made a handmade book. Mm. Talk about that. What do you mean a handmade book? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> People need to know because, you know, sometimes you see... They see the glory, but they don't understand your story. We know that you're a New York Times bestselling author, but we need to know how you got to that point. So talk about- well, I don't want to give away too much because I just wrote my memoir. And we're going to talk about that later I on. I just wrote everything you're asking me mm. in total detail. In your upcoming book. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about that in a and little so, but, but to answer the question, um, I found a lady who ran a stationery shop mm -hmm. who said that she could, I guess she made smaller pamphlets or smaller books or whatever, but she had the binding equipment. She had some kind of crazy glue. She took my book type on a typewriter mm -hmm. and she did the pages, collated them with her. I don't know, I typed on a typewriter and copied it on a photocopy machine, like on regular white paper. Wow. Um, and then she sat there and literally handmade um, 500 books. And her name was Noveline Tanksley. The books were handmade. And it was white. It had a white cover and it had this gold gun on the front. Like the glue, like it was crazy. She charged like almost $9 a book. Uh-huh. But she did it. Wow. <sighs> Secrets of how to do it your damn self. So then, <laughs> so then you get a whole bunch of books uh, printed, okay? Um, right. By glue. How did you start? Well, I, started, started, I started to realize that I was on to something once I started selling them. Okay. And I also talk about this in my book. Mm -hmm. All right, and I give all of the information that you need. Okay. So, so I'll do everything that was told to me to go do. So let's transition into that then, because that just keeps coming up your next book. So the point of your last published book and the one that you are currently writing, how much time is in between? Nine years. Nine years. Why so long, Carrie? Mm -hmm. Why make us wait so long? 
because people were messing with me. Mm. Mm. And I had to level everything out. Had to level everything out. Yeah. So, you know, let's talk about that a little bit more, just backpedaling, you know, because True to the, uh, True to the Game 1 um, was adapted into a feature film, and now we're about to see True to the Game 2 also adapted into a feature film. Um, what's his name? Manny? What's his last name? Manny? So I did a deal with Manny. Okay. Um, Manny, I did a deal with Manny and And, you know, as... Um, as I've been learning, I've been learning this business, um, and I'm just really, really amazed. I'm so amazed. Like I can't get over it. So, um, I'm amazed that it's my work is is still relevant and still regarded, and I'm amazed that all of these wonderful people came together. Yeah. Um, you know, when I know, you know, nothing is always what it seems, yeah. obviously. Um, and so people looking on the outside, looking in, would have their own perspective. Um, sometimes it's so hard to do things on an independent level. It is. It is very very hard like i said people see your glory but they don't understand your story they don't understand they don't understand it's so hard nobody you know it, it's different when you have the machine behind you yeah. and it's and it's and and when you don't have that machine uh it, it's just so hard so when i say that i am so grateful to everyone that has participated, put in their time, their effort, um, and, 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 and loves the content, um, you know, that my favorite people love my content enough to go through and weather whatever storm has to be weathered to get whatever needs to be done, get it done, and work together and try to um, just try to continue to build and try to work together and do right by one another. And I just think that that is the most, you know, um, you know, amazing of things when you can do that and accomplish that. And like I said, people see one side, I see, um, I see effort and I see talent and I see people believing in something and I see them believing in me um, and my work. Yeah, you know, and what I do. We definitely believe in you. We definitely see your talent as evidence by you becoming a New York Times bestselling author selling millions of books. But one of the challenges that I did see, um, one year actor Columbus Short, he did go on Instagram and he was talking ill or badly of Manny Haley saying that he wasn't paying the actors. And then I saw some court records where you also sued Manny. Um, do you feel comfortable talking about that a little bit? What was the purpose of your lawsuit? Well, put it like this. I, um, I've always been one to file. I file. I've always filed. Okay. Um, and even though you realize that you have to do what you have to do to protect yourself. Right. In business. Right. It's never personal. It's business. It, it's not personal. And, you know, when it comes to people don't see people don't, you got to understand something. Let me just be really, really quick. Cool really, really clear. Mm -hmm. Manny is like a brother to me mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. I met Manny back in 04 from a very good friend of mine, okay. um, Arkel and, and Don Poo. And um, Arkel was married to Diamond at the time who passed away. But, you know, I was introduced to Manny um, and 
this is back in 04, 05 when, um, you know, I was at the height of, of a lot of things in my own career. I had been uh, self-publishing books. I had just released Dutch in 04. Um, I was working on Deadly Rains. I was about to release that. Um, then I was going to, you know, I had a lot of things on my desk lined up. And I met him in 04, and he was trying to get Keisha Cole off the ground. Mm -hmm. um, right, because he was managing her at the time. Yeah, but it was getting, it was that pr process of of work that was everybody was putting in at that time um and um i was a witness to a lot of a lot of folks and their work mm -hmm. and when manny came to me and said that he wanted to get the film rights you know i didn't know if he would be able to actually get it done but he did but he did so did yes. you, like, did and, the, and you know what this is the thing this is the thing you got to understand, this is like a little brother to me. This is somebody that I used to, you know, pay the bill at crustaceans. This is someone who I watched come up. You know, I used to cover him. Um, he's my friend. And I, you know, I just feel like, um, again, you got to understand. He, you know, called me and said, I think I want to marry Yolanda. We've been together. Like, I know I'm about to come up. Do you think I should, you know, I don't, I want her to be there. Like, should I get married? I was like, me, any marry her. Uh -huh. Marry her. You know? Um, so this is a 16-year uh, relationship. Okay. Yeah, and in this know? relationship, we have to learn and understand one another. Uh-huh. grow. Uh -huh. and we do it like like coronavirus we will get through it but <laughs> i don't have a problem filing yeah, <laughs> so file right now Never personal if you want to file you know, hey, whatever you want to do there but, was another, there but was another I just want to be clear, yeah i just want to be clear that um you know, I'm a very private person when it comes to my discrepancies, and and instead of I don't I don't really like to talk about things because I think it creates an unfair playing field, um, you know, and it does because Manny's not here to defend himself either, mm -hmm. you know. I I was I have so many stories that I could tell you um, outside of that relationship in business where um you really have to read this book you really have to read this book because you know Let i've seen so that. many people <laughs> yeah i was gonna say that you, 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 you let me you let me read a few pages of your book thank you so much for that you know it's a good I little investigator inspector gadget over here but Go ahead. In, in this next book you also talked about um an experience where your co-author um, took your book and published it himself. Our book. You, your he, book. At the time, it was our book. He, he published both of your books. Um, but it brings us to the next question for you know, emerging authors or current authors. What best advice can you give them to protect the contents of their work? Nothing. There's no advice there? Homeland Security. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can say it's something that you did a little bit. You did don't a want filing. We don't want to home. Hold up. Where's the bank? Yeah. You don't want to do that. <laughs> you did mention, how about just make sure you have a lawyer, make sure you have some sort of legal representation. Listen to me. Listen to me and listen to me good. Let me let me just say this to you, okay? I don't really know if we have been in business long enough to understand business. Business is the worst. This shit is crazy. It is crazy. It's, it's all contractual. Okay. It's, um, <sighs> let me just say this to you. This is the best advice I can give you. You want some advice? Yes. 
from the words, from the mouth, and the words of a dear friend of mine named Jane Zellis, who manages Red Man and Method Man and works with them. Um, what I need a lawyer for? Your handshake's not good enough? Unfortunately, it's not. Because we're dealing with um, some... Oh, so let me just say this to you. Um, I really like a person at this point where their word means more than what's on any piece of paper to me. But can you risk that? Can you no, risk you can't. But let me just say this. Then you don't need to be doing business. Mm. Because what's going to happen, let me just say this. You don't need to be with that person. If you, can't. you don't need to be with that person. You don't need to do business with them. You don't even need to try. You're just going to keep, you, listen, this is the deal. If I got to do a deal with you, and then I got to go hire a lawyer, I got to sue you, I got to chase you, I got to try to stop you, I got to go over here, I got to do this, I got to go, you want to do business with that? I mean, that's how you want to do business? Yeah, but you know. And so this is, listen, 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 let me just say this to you. You're going to, the person, listen. You're only as good as your paperwork. Exactly. So that's why a firm handshake and a, a glimmer in your eye yes. is the, enough. The person that I'm doing business with, either I'm going to fuck you or I'm not. True. If I'm going to get on you, if I'm going to screw you, if I'm, I'm not going to pay you. I'm not going to give you your publishing on time. I'm not going to give you your, your records on time. I'm not going to, I'm not going to report to you. So, okay, let me just back you up. It's hard to uh, comprehend because I'm in a different space. And so this is my whole thing. You know, I would really like to just do business with good people. I don't have to, I should have to go get no lawyer. I should have to sue you. I should not have to go through all of this dumb ass shit with you in the first place. And so for me, let me just finish. As a person who's run their own business for 20 years, I'm business owner. I've been in business for 20 years. You know all the people I've taken care of? You know how many checks I've cut? Do you know how many times I've counted the books and counted the books and counted the records and made sure everybody got what they were supposed to get? Right. Do you understand we're talking? I'm cutting checks for six figures. I'm taking care of people. But that's you. I, want, that's you know, look, I got employees. I'm running payroll. I got, I have a business. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I take care of people. I have to worry about payroll and compu pay and paychecks. And I got to worry about uh, 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 the, the, the 401k plans and the SEP funds and making sure that the medicals pay for the company. And you know, I'm running a business. Right. And so when it comes time to doing business, if you got all of these type of folks out here that's a uh, 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 want you to do business with them and, and they don't want to do right by you. Okay, understand something. Um, since you did your homework, or since you did all your homework, uh -huh. um, I guess you see that I had one situation out there. Yeah. With me in my office in, in 2000 and uh, uh, one or 2002 and um, Shannon sued me because mm -hmm. we was fighting because <laughs> he was over there uh, messing with Vicky and I got mad. Uh -huh. <laughs> Vicky Stringer. Uh -huh. They was over there. They was over there putting books out and shit and whatever they was doing in Ohio. Right. But see, Terry, that brings up my point. You are and not going to get that call. Not everyone else is. But how are we going to protect ourselves? Sweetheart, you have to do right by people. And people have to be in a good space to want to do good business and do right by folks out here. And I learned early on two lessons. 
I learned this lesson in what? When oh one, oh two, when they said, Look, you're gonna get Shannon, you're gonna get Shannon that money. You're gonna pay him every dime you owe, or you're gonna lose your promotion. And so I learned early on that as a business person being in charge of the records and being in charge of the accounts and being in charge of the money, that it was important for me to be willing to count and pay people whether I liked them or whether I didn't like them. It's called being ethical. And that's the yeah. problem. You have to have ethics. You can't let your fights or your disagreements or, you know, and a person shouldn't have to jump for their money either. You should be willing to take care of them. And so after I went through that with Shannon and once I realized how petty my beef was with him Mm -hmm. you know when I really looked I said you know what won't happen again I hear you so let's just my lesson early and so therefore I was able to move forward through whatever beef I would have with my I would have my um, authors, whatever beef I had with my writers, my ghost writers, my this, my that, whatever it was, there wasn't no money. Right. You know, everybody. So, you know, you learned some valuable lessons. And we didn't ever have to see uh, for anything relative again. So you learned some valuable lessons. Um, Early. You're pinning another book. Is, is the book finished? And can you tell us the title of the book? It's called Terry Payne. And it's, so tell us a little bit, what is the book about? It's, a, it, it's it. well, it's written in it's written in uh, four or five years of my life. It goes through my years in publishing, but it also reflects on my business and me being in business before I started. Um, you know, the, it just reflects this whole journey um, in a lot of ways. It goes back in time. It goes back 27 years ago and me writing that book and that little firm and everything that was happening in my life and wow. um, you know I touch on everything and everybody for the most part I name everybody um, I don't want to invade people's personal space uh, and, and those folks that I don't want to invade I, I can change the name but everything that I'm saying uh, happened to me in business Mm-hmm. And you realize, um, you know, what it is to build and have so much and to lose. Mm-hmm. And it's, um, it's actually a great time for this book because, you know, I know that there are a lot of people out there that are losing right now that, that, that aren't bringing in income. That, that, you know, the businesses may not survive, and I can only imagine um, what they must be going through because in order to survive this, you're going to have to level out, yeah. and you're going to have to downsize. Yeah, it was you, might even have to, you might even have to reinvent yourself. It's true. You know, before all of this coronavirus, you know, entrepreneurship was an option. Now it's becoming a necessity. So in you pinning and, and writing this book and reliving some of your life's moments, what did you learn about yourself? So what did you relearn about yourself? Writing it, I look back and I'm like, how like how did I get through it? And maybe I should speak to someone. Was it a lot of trauma that you had to revisit? Um, again, it's the position that I was in, um, it's the level of care that I had for a lot of people, and it's a story of money, mm. it involves a lot of money. Money which you is know? the root of all evil. Baby. Makes the world go round. <laughs> And, you know, I was talking to my girlfriend and uh, she said to me, I can't believe you stopped writing. Like, why did you stop writing? Why? Like, why? You know, I missed you. You know, it was just so much on me that I think I probably 
just didn't even want it anymore. Mm. I didn't I didn't want it anymore. So what made you want it again? I realized that I realized that a lot of it was with Manny making true to the game. Hmm. And I said to myself, and then a lot of it has been, okay, so a lot of it has been me figuring things out and trying to figure out if I had to go through all that and I had to lose financially, you know, and it was like, I don't think people realized when the bookstores closed what was happening to me as a publisher. Yeah. Like, I could just cry going back to 2010. 2010 was, you know, and, and there was no notice, and they all filed bankruptcy. And, you know, I don't even think that people understand that I'm a business person, and I've been running my own business for 20 years. And I had nationwide distribution, and I just thought my life was so great. And I was making a million dollars a year by myself. Um every year over a million so once the bookstores closed and let me just be really clear we're talking you know i don't went through about 10 million wow yeah people didn't realize that so did you have to resort to getting wait, 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 listen, listen. <laughs> i don't think uh black enterprise realized that they never contacted me for an interview but uh, <laughs> i don't know if ebony is that what I was over there doing. I don't think black people knew how powerful I was as a publisher. Yes. I don't think the black community knew that I was a self-made millionaire. It was not being advertised back then. Mm. Just the books were being advertised. Oh. I wasn't giving out the numbers. I wasn't you know, telling you that I had sold a million books by myself out the trunk of the car back then. I wasn't posting, you know, 400,000 copies, 300,000 copies. So we wasn't doing all that. Right. Because sometimes when you're doing things, you don't need to let people know what you're doing. And so it was people like, you know, Manny coming to my mansion, people like people on the out, you know, people who were on the outside had no idea. My closest friends had no idea. Unless you would have never known, unless you put it all together. Well, hold up, you got it. The offices are in the Empire State Building. You know, hold on, hold on, hold on. What else she over there doing? You see what she do? Yo, you paying attention to her? And you I had to. Know you had an office in the Empire State Building. That's why I started to me. Huh? I said I didn't even realize that you had an office inside of the Empire State Building until I started reading this new book that you're about to publish. Okay. I had offices in the private building. I had, a, I had, a, I built a mansion from the ground up. Wow. We have property taxes over here running twenty thousand a year. This is Jersey. This is North Bergen. We don't play. This is, this is not a game. I'm so, in and out of the tunnel all day. So just, just pause for a moment, Terry. So when bookstores started to close and it started to interrupt your finances, did you have enough money saved where you were able to live off of that, or did you have to go and find another job? I talk about it in the book. You never have enough money saved when you start losing more lines of distribution. And then everything is being told to go to the internet, go to the internet. And back then, the concept was download your file here. You're going to go to create, you know, you're going to go. To right. You if you were your own business, you got files done yourself. You were still being told to download and people were going to take over and there wasn't really gonna be any 
the connection is going in and out, Terry. Going into more of an as-needed situation because the returns were just coming in. Like, all over the country, returns were just coming in. And, um, you know, you have to level out. Have enough money? No, not by 2012, 2013. The last book I published was in 2011, and it was just—it was just too. Uh, it wasn't fruitful. It wasn't fruitful by 2011, and then you had this internet, and and you know I also think that you had a decline in readership because what people didn't pay attention to was okay. So if you're taking away all of these stores all at once, you now have the black community that has to go get a Kindle or has to have an iPad in order to read. So they're going to need back in 2010, 2011, they're going to need $200 to buy that Kindle, or they're going to need $500 to buy that iPad. So right. you just need to disenfranchise the disenfranchise. Yep. That's a great point. That was going on either. As far as I was concerned, you totally messing with my whole little market right here because right. you got everybody reading books. And now you're taking the books away, you're taking the bookstores away, and you're telling them they need a 200 to $500 reading device in order to play this new game. Yeah. And, 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 and that upset a lot of folks because back then people don't understand. You had, in, in, in 08, you, you know, you, you had that housing crisis. Everybody was losing their homes. Right, right. There was a corruption. There was a recession. It was, you know, and so people couldn't afford it. Right. What are the devices? So um, in talking about those changes then, and with your book to, that's going to be released very soon, how will readers be able to read your book since we no longer have bookstores? Will it be available online and be downloaded? I'm sorry, what'd you say, huh? I said, with the closing of bookstores and with you about to release your latest book, Terry's Game, how can people find your book? I mean, the ebooks are still online at Amazon and Barnes and Nobles and Apple. I mean, you can download the ebook. I'm in the process of putting my entire collection back in print again. Oh. And everything will be sold from my website after everything's back in collection. Okay, and give us your website real quick. Huh? Give us your website. Okay, so my website is under construction right now. Okay. It's not ready, but okay. um, it's going to, it's Terry Woods Media dot com terrywoodsmedia.com and so you'll have access to ebooks you'll have access to my books in print you'll have access uh to see the books that are audio books and how you can link to them and get them and you'll also have a movie section where you can see you know the movie stuff nice mm -hmm. so you expect your latest book terry's game because i read june june so around that time, the website will also be up and running so that... I'm hoping that the website will be up on the 15th. He gave uh, me a date of the 15th. 15th of what month? I would, this month. Of this month? Eight. Yeah. You just, the corner. you just don't know because it's just so much going on and nobody ever, you know, it, you know, so I don't hold me to any, you know, any dates on the website because it's not my control. Um, my only concern for Terry's game is whether or not I'm going to be able to print a book if printers are, are, are actually printing um, and, and working. Right. Um, that's true. Oh, wow. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. That's a problem if it is, that which is. leads you, which leads you to have to ebook. Right. Which I'm not going to do any ebooking um, except for my uh, website. Um, where you will be able to purchase the PDF and the PDF will open inside of the app. Okay. Actually, I think you're going to, it's not even going to be available on the website. You're going to actually have to download the app and the PDF is inside of the app. Okay. So until the website um, is up and running, just give us your Instagram so that we can follow you that way so that we know when the book is finished, Terry's Game, and when the website is up and running. Okay. So Instagram is Terry Woods Books. Nice. Instagram and then I have my Terry Wood um what am I on Facebook? Hold on, let me look. <laughs> I got uh I don't even know my exact Facebook name. Uh oh it's Terry Woods. See? Terry Woods. 
Terry, Terry Woods. Woods. And then you also have my kids, um, Terry Woods' kids. Have you ever seen my kids' stuff? Of course. I have your, your, your kids' book, Terry. Stop playing with okay, me. Okay, okay, just making sure. So, <laughs> yeah, you got my terrywoodskids.com where you can purchase my children's books. Nice. Um, Everyone, adults and children. I love it. I'm so sad for my ginger. She's not going to be out of the closet for a while. She can just go sit there um, <laughs> until all of this gets worked out. Who, Nobody the wants to get a giraffe. You want people to come out the closet in two No, my giraffe. My giraffe costume. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, wait, because we do have to wrap up um, this um, interview. So, true to the one, um, true to the game one, and true to the game two, adapt into a feature film. And we expect the same thing. For Perfect. And you know Dutch, too. You know, Dutch has been done, too. That's right. It's about to come out with Lance Gross as, as um, the leading actor. Correct, right? He's a fast worker. I don't know how he does it. I'm excited. But it speaks volumes to the level of content that you have produced over the years, just shifting the culture of, of urban literature, of self-publishing, of boss babes, of entrepreneurship. But you know what this is? Let me just tell you the thing with Dutch. Let me just tell you my love affair with Dutch. My love affair with Dutch is like my love affair. I got a love affair with Quadir. I have a love affair with Dutch. And I have a love affair with like the Deadly Reigns brothers. Uh-huh. And they'll forever live. It's just the way it's going to be. Right. But this is the thing with Dutch. And his mother and the Black Pantherism and, you know, how we put it together um, and just, I mean, being able to be a part of writing that book is phenomenal. Um, and being able to add the things that I was able to add to it that I just feel has, has really carried it, especially, you know, the whole thing now when you look back on the um, criminal justice system and how this mass incarceration has really affected black communities and affected all of these black men and how mean it's been to them and just how they've been treated. And so then to see Dutch, um, you know, in this book, which was like, again, we're talking 15 years ago where it wasn't, it wasn't socially cool, right. you know, to even go visit someone in jail. Right. You know, he said, oh, my boyfriend's in jail. Like, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> you know, so back then, nobody was helping nobody in right. prison, to be clear. Mm-hmm. And to come out with, you know, this book that spoke on these, you know, massive levels, um, you know, uh, and, and sent such a loud voice into the community and into the minds of people and Dutch became their hero because, you know, he escaped the, you know, he is, he, 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 you know, his great escape and whatnot, but just, just the whole, uh, looking back on it and how things are relevant, um, 30 years ago, 15 years ago, um, you know, how these books inspired folks to read and write my hustle, whatever inspired them, um, back then it, had, it, it continues to inspire me now that's great really good. so we're just going to sum up this conversation because from everything that you've told me i'm just going to add another word to your title visionary because i don't even think that you know you had the foresight to know that what you were writing about 27 30 years ago how it, how it would still be relevant today in 2020 and beyond so that speaks volumes to your success and terry you know i always wish you nothing but continued success thank you so much for sharing um, my platform with you um and i'm sure that my listeners and my viewers are just going to be impressed by this conversation thank you so much well thank you for having me and please wash your hands cover your mouth cover your hair bathe when you come from inside wipe everything down carry a bottle of clorox with you it's just ridiculous but try to stay as safe as you can and protect yourself and your family we will we will thank you so much terry take care no, thank you for talking to me i can't believe you little inspector gadget you <laughs>
I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>